Welcome everybody to a session on alternative careers in microbiology. But I'm gonna be frank, from the outright, I'm gonna call it careers in microbiology because frankly, I don't consider my career an alternative to being a microbiologist because I am a microbiologist. My name is Ellen Fox and I am the ASM Managing Developmental Editor of ClinMicroNow, which if you're not familiar with, you should stop up at the ASM Press booth to take a look. My story actually starts probably in undergraduate and when I started in college, I went to a liberal arts school and decided I wanted nothing to do with science. I was good at it in high school, but I said, this is not the career for me. Because I went to a liberal arts school, I had to take a science course as part of my liberal arts education. And I remember distinctly in my third or fourth week of taking Bio 101, which is stuff I'd already learned before, that science to me has always been like opening up a book written in a foreign language, but a language that I always understood. I was born understanding it, it was always easy. My college was a religious school, although I don't consider myself over-religious. One of the big overarching themes while I was in college was finding your vocation. And for those of you who don't know what vocation means, vocation means to find what you were called to do whether you're following your gut, whether you are following a, a deity, whether you're following it from God, whether you're following instructions from whatever power you believe in. Vocation is about finding something you love, finding something you were born to do, and pursuing it with a passion. So I decided to become a biology major, but because I'm from the Midwest and we're all about making very sensible decisions, I said, you know what, I'm gonna go to med school or I'm gonna go to dental school or I'm gonna be a vet. I'm going to go to a physical therapy school. But then I took my microbiology course and I got into it. I read Outbreak. I decided I was going to go to graduate school. I was going to work in a BSL-4 lab. This is the life I was going to have. And I'm sure many of you probably experienced that at some point in time. Now, my parents were not enthused at the idea because they could not see a career in microbiology. And to be frank, neither could I. I didn't know where graduate school was going to take me. And I was not one of those people who started down my graduate school course and said, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I went saying, let's figure it out. And maybe that's naive, but that's what I did. So I went to graduate school and quickly decided that I wasn't going to work in a BSL-4 lab because A, there's not very many in the United States, and B, if you want to get out in graduate school in less than 10 years, BSL-4 work, probably not the best idea. So instead I studied parasites, which to be frank aren't any faster, but that's what I did. I studied parasites and I graduated. And as many of you who have gone through graduate school know, you take a postdoc partly because you have to most days, but also because you need more time to figure it out. When I was finishing my graduate degree, my PhD mentor came in one day wearing two different colored shoes. And I said, Ed, why are you wearing two different colored shoes? He said, well, I got dressed in the closet this morning because I had to be here at 4 a.m. to finish writing my grant because it's grant season and I didn't want to wake up my family. And if I'm completely honest with myself, that was the exact moment where I said, this career, running in a lab and being a PI, is not the lab that I want. But I always knew it did not make my career any less important. But I decided I was going to find something else I was called to do, something I felt more passionate about. So when I was writing my dissertation, my faculty advisor called me and he'd read my introduction and he said, Ellen, I know you're really tired. I know you have a lot on your plate, but I have to ask you, did you copy all of this from a textbook? Did you copy? He was asking me if I plagiarized and we had a great relationship and I was slightly insulted. I said, Ed, why? Why would you think I plagiarized the introduction to my thesis? He said, well, it's better writing than me. And I said, well, that's not a bad thing, right? I'm allowed to be a better writer than you. He goes, no, I just thought you was really good and maybe you should consider pursuing a career in publishing or science writing. And I said, that's a great idea. Let me think about it. So I started my postdoctoral fellowship and while I was studying parasites again, which take forever, so I had lots of time to think about the next stage of my life, a position at the American Association of Immunologists opens up in their publishing department. Many of you may know the Journal of Immunology, the longest running journal of immunology. So I applied for the interview. I got an interview and I started at the JI, very excited to be working in publishing, but no idea what to expect. And within two weeks of working there, I knew this is where I needed to be. Part of the reason why I went to graduate school is I knew that I always loved not being pigeonholed in a certain thing. I wanted to learn a lot about a lot, but I never wanted to be an expert on anything, which is why I probably wasn't qualified to run a lab, thank God. So 
I worked in publishing, and when I started the JI, it was fantastic, because I got to see every paper that came in, and I got to see every paper that went out. And I got to see how it, the reviews, I got to see the process. From the other side, I'd experienced journal publishing a lot as an author, but never on the other side of a publisher. And I started learning about all the challenges that society publishers face these days, which are quite a lot. And so I started taking courses through the Society of Scholarly Publishing. I started sitting on seminars. I started reading more. I started using my vocation, but I also started applying a lot of hard work to become qualified in a field that I felt I had absolutely no qualifications in. So the pandemic hit. I had reached a point in my career where I said, I have to commit. I was working at AAI, and I was working on the journals and with the scientific meeting department. I said, it's too much. I'm going to have to pick. What am I going to do for the next stage of my career? I'd gone about as far as I could go. So I applied for some jobs at ASM in journals, and I also applied for a job at the NIH working in the grant review department, which is exactly what I had done at the journals, but with journal articles. So I was more than qualified, and I got offered a position. An FTE, which for those of you who may be federal employees know that FTEs, full-time employment positions at the government, are A, hard to come by, and B, safety, security in your career. At the same time that I got offered an FTE at the NIH, I got offered an early career fellowship with the Society of Scholarly Publishing. Out of many applicants, for some reason, they chose me at one person that they said, this girl gets it, this girl has ideas, and this girl has a future in publishing. So I looked at my family one night and I said, I have to make a choice. I'm going to either take this job at the NIH and know exactly where I'm going to be in the next 10 years, or I'm going to accept an unpaid fellowship and stay in the job that I'm in and figure out where to take this career in publishing. Well, you can probably guess what I did, because I still work in publishing. Was I nervous? Absolutely. Was I excited? Absolutely. Marie Kondo was a really big thing at that time, and I kind of think at this moment where I was Marie kondo my career. I was deciding to find things that sparked joy in my career. So I took my fellowship with SSP. I got to know wonderful mentors, some of which who had PhDs in, my, in, my, in science and were publishing, which if you're not familiar, a lot of scientists who have PhDs don't go into publishing. People who work in publishing are people who write were English majors and people who actually go to school to do this type of thing. Publishers are not often like me and editors. We're often not people who spent most of their life working in a lab with rodents and microscopes and pipettes. But I got to know some wonderful people who pointed me in the direction who said, this is what we should do. Let's focus on building this career set. Let's focus on building a skill set. So I continued with my fellowship with SSP, and then out of the blue, I got an email from HR at ASM that said, Dear Ellen, we have a position open that we think you'd be very fit for. Would you like to interview? And this was a big moment in my life because I said, this is the first time where I did not seek out a position, but they asked me if I was interested. I interviewed, and if I can say it was probably the easiest interview of my life because I felt so at home. It was the first time where I truly felt qualified to talk about publishing and where I truly felt excited at the prospect of this next stage in my career. So I started working for ASM, and that was two years ago, and I could not have been more happy with my career decision. I moved from journals, I now work in books, but ClinMicro now was kind of a hybrid between journal and continuous publications of a textbook. So it's an absolute wonderful fit for me. And the reality is, is I don't know where my career is going to take me next. But if I learned anything from my undergraduate career, from my graduate career, to the seven years I've spent in publishing, is that following my vocation, trusting my gut, works out pretty well when you combine that with curiosity about alternative careers, or as I just like to call it, a career. Because again, I don't consider this an alternative. I don't consider myself a failure as a bench scientist. I committed to doing something else. And this career is really important. The dissemination of scientific knowledge via journals and textbooks and news articles and anything that involves editing and production of any sort is incredibly important. And I think the pandemic has really taught us that, the importance of communicating high quality science and the importance of having a background in science to communicate that information to an informed and an uninformed public. So the best advice I can give when thinking about a career other than the bench in science is to think about what brings you joy. 
What in your skill set makes you excited? What in your skill set makes you happy? What in your skill set do you feel? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? And when you go into it, understand that it may be tough and it may be scary, but that's not a bad thing. Thank you. Bye -bye.